Hey guys, so for the past two videos I've been giving you tips on how you can improve your chances to win the Swift Student Challenge and in this video I'm going to answer questions that you guys sent me in the past videos. But hey, if you're new around here, my name is Rodolfo, in this channel we talk about iOS development, tech in general, productivity and everything in between. So if this is something that you're into, please leave a like subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get the next videos when I post them. And with that out of the way, let's get to the questions. So Atri asks, do we have to write the personal information in essay format? Well, you don't have to, but as we talked about in the past videos, storytelling is important. So I think that if you put it in essay format, it's just easier for you to develop a, a story around it with beginning, middle and end. So I think it's a good idea. It's not mandatory, but I think it's a good idea. So next we have Yuraj. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, but he asks how to convert his playground to a zip file. There have been other people who asked about how to convert into Swift playgrounds and things like that. And he also said that he was having trouble with the submission page. So let's go to the computer and I'm gonna show both things. How do you zip it into a way that you can submit it? And how do you submit your playground start to finish? So let's pretend that this is the Xcode playground you did and this is where it's saved. All you need to do is right click, select compress, and that's it. This is the file that you're gonna send to Apple. The same applies if your playground was made with Swift Playgrounds, the app. So you're gonna right click on your playground, showing finder, it's probably gonna be here on iCloud Drive Playgrounds. So you can copy that somewhere else just for safety. So copy, paste item, and then you're gonna compress the same way. Here you have your zip file to send to Apple. With regards to how do you apply on the website, this is the website. You just click apply now. It's gonna ask for you to log in. You log in. So this is the form. It's gonna show your name, email, you're gonna fill it out with your phone, your age, gender, ethnicity, how did you learn the code, so whatever applies to you, your student status, whatever applies to you, if you're enrolled in college or high school or something like that, if you graduated less than six months ago, just select which one applies to you. Here is where you're gonna send your playground, so choose file, you're gonna choose that zip file we created. It asks where it should run your playground, so how did you build it? Did you use Swift Playgrounds on iPad, on the Mac, or Xcode? So select which one applies to your playground. Did you use open source software? Select here. And here is where the essays go. So this is the one for the playground. This is the one for sharing your enthusiasm for computer science or coding. And if you have apps on the App Store, you can tell them about it here. Usually what ends up happening is that they feature your app in the first page of the App Store around the time of WWDC. So. I highly recommend filling this out if this applies to you because you get some free publicity. Here you have details about the prize. It's probably going to be a jacket again. You choose the size of the jacket that you want, fill out with your address, put any comments that you think are relevant, check the terms and conditions and hit submit. That's it. Next question is how would one frame a story around the playground? I think that goes together with that thing that I've been saying about picking a theme that is something that you're passionate about. So let me give you a practical example of what I did in my last submission. I'm just fascinated about space travel. So in 2019, when I did my last submission, it was the 60th anniversary of the first moon landing. I had 
just seen the movie First Men, the movie about Neil Armstrong, and the whole thing about how in the 60s we, we were able to like put a man on the moon is just fascinating to me. So I decided to make a playground about that. My first idea was to make a game that didn't quite work out, then I tried to make an AR kit scene of the moon landing and it worked as an app but it was breaking on the playground's fry pad, it was just crashing and I couldn't find it, I couldn't figure out why. So I said, well, I'm gonna make a children's book uh, telling the story of how this first moon landing happened, an interactive book with images and videos and animations and things like that. And that's the story I told. I said that I was fascinated with space travel and the story of the moon landing and how that made an impression on me since I was a kid and how I thought it was interesting to pass that along to future generations so that children could understand what the moon landing was all about. And then I went on to talk about the technologies I used that because this was a children's book, I felt that it was going to be more interesting to have something hand-drawn on the iPad with the Apple Pencil that looked like something that was for kids and the UI kit animations and all the other stuff that I used in the playground, then I talked about that. So that's kind of how I framed the story. You just pick the reason why you chose that theme and what interests you about it and you talk about that and then you talk about how the technologies that you used empowered you to bring your vision to life. Next we have a question about the mailing address so if you win the challenge Apple is gonna send you the prizes to your address so he's asking about the mailing address that he should put in there because he's gonna be traveling. I would say put your home address. In my case, when I last won, uh, the prize wasn't sent to your home. The prize was the trip to WWDC. So I don't have personal experience with this, but it seems like it works just like a online order, like you bought something and they're gonna ship to your house. So I think that it's better if you ship it to your house and you have someone there to pick it up and when you come back from traveling then it's gonna be waiting for you there then ship it to an address where you think you're gonna be and then maybe you come back before the package arrives there's more that can go wrong so just ship it to your house ship it to somewhere that there's gonna be someone there to sign and pick it up Next we have Sammy asking, I know a little Swift, got an iPad, how to win the challenge for a complete beginner? If you're a complete beginner, I would say that your main focus here should be learning Swift and the way to do that is start working on your project. You're probably gonna get stuck in some places like trying to do an animation, how do I put this view where I want to put it? And once you run into those problems, then you can Google or search YouTube for those specific problems and then get an answer for that, solve that problem, continue working on it, you're gonna get stuck again, repeat the process, search, try to solve that exact problem until the project is finished. And winning is just, you know, you submit your project, you try to do the best you can, you use the tips about storytelling and the essays and things like that, and then you just hope for the best. But have in mind that even if you don't win the challenge, the amount of things that you're gonna learn by trying to win the challenge may put you into a position that you're gonna have a better chance to winning next year. So use this as a learning experience experience. If you do win, that's amazing. If you don't, don't be discouraged. You're probably gonna learn a lot and that's gonna increase your chances of winning next year. And last question that we have is from Darshio on Instagram asking if I am participating this year, if I am trying out, and I am not trying out this year. So I'm not participating this year for two reasons. First is I'm not enrolled as a student on anything right now, not even STEM or anything like that. So I would need to be enrolled in an eligible course and between my full-time 
full-time job and working on these videos and trying to uh, grow this channel that doesn't leave out a lot of time to do the kinds of courses that make you eligible and I would probably not have a lot of time to work on the playground itself so hopefully next year the situation is gonna be different maybe they're gonna have in-person WWDC again and that makes it more worthwhile to you know just put in the time to work on a playground to be able to go to WWDC but not this year so these were the questions that I had for this video I hope that you guys found that helpful I am hoping that at least some of you get to win this and it was very gratifying last year to get messages from people that watched the videos and said that they applied the tips and that they won and that they felt that it helped them I hope it happens again this year please let me know if you submit your playground what was the playground if you want to share that and let me know if you win and I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please leave a like it really does help the channel a lot subscribe hit the notification bell and I see you on the next video bye